Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here from a blog to watch. Today I'm going to be interviewing Jack Carlson, the founder of Rowing Blazers, and Rowing Blazers has just come up with their first collaboration with Seiko for the Seiko 5 times Rowing Blazers. There's three different watches, they're very cool. Jack, welcome. Thanks for having me. So Jack, talk a little bit about Rowing Blazers, assuming that the blog to watch audience doesn't necessarily know um, about what the company is and what your background is. Yeah, Rowing Blazers is uh, about four years old. It's a brand that I started. It really brings together a whole bunch of my eclectic interests. It's kind of my creative outlet. It's really a brand that is devoted to the classics, but I think we try to do things in a way that's a little more fun, a little more irreverent, has a sense of, of irony, and has a sense of youthfulness uh, that you don't necessarily see in other brands that are devoted to the classics. And we try to bring in some of the concepts and philosophies more usually associated with streetwear to what we do. But we really don't kind of follow uh, too many rules, even though we are a brand that is really sort of focused on classic, you know, British and American clothing. Now, in the name Rowing Blazers, you're actually quite literal. These are jackets worn by people during uh, the, the, the sport of rowing. And you yourself wrote a book called Rowing Blazers. What was that book about and what were the circumstances around writing such a book? Yeah, well, the name comes from the book that I wrote. The brand itself, we do make blazers. We make blazers for a whole bunch of rowing teams, also all sorts of other sports and social clubs and teams and organizations. But the brand goes way beyond that now. It's a little bit like how Polo, you know, Polo is named Polo, but it's not necessarily a brand that's all about the sport of Polo. But uh, yeah, Rowing Blazers was a book that I wrote um, back in 2014. Uh, it was sort of inspired by my time in the sport of rowing um, and is really sort of like an anthropological work on all of the different traditions and myths and rituals related to the blazer. Um, at rowing clubs all over the world because every rowing team has its own blazer and has its own sort of set of like myths and traditions and rules and regulations uh, related to the blazer. Also, people don't really realize, but the blazer as a, a, an article of clothing comes from the sport of rowing. It was like a warm-up jacket worn by oarsmen at Oxford and Cambridge to warm up, to jog down, to practice in basically before the days of technical fabrics or even before the days of cotton jersey. And um, yeah, as you say, I mean, rowing was a sport that I was involved in for a long, long time, culminating um, in being on the U.S. national team um, from 2011 to 2016. Um, I don't come from like a fashion or even business background. I've spent most of my adult life sitting in boats. Um, and the other big thing that I've spent most of my adult life doing is uh, studying archaeology. That's really interesting. And I want to talk about archaeology in a moment. But just sort of going back to rowing blazers, you also mentioned the brand today is highly diversified and also does a lot of sort of street style clothing. What does street style clothing of today and traditional rowing blazers have in common? When you created that intersection, what are some of the interesting results? Help describe them for people that aren't familiar with the collection. Yeah, you know, I think Rowing Blazers is a brand we try to defy categorization. You know, I think there are some people that think of us as a streetwear brand. There are some people that think of us as like a really sort of traditional preppy brand. You know, obviously those two things, it's hard for them to kind of exist simultaneously. I don't think we necessarily fit nice and neatly into either sort of box. I'd say the thing that ties everything together that we're doing is that it's all stuff that I'm kind of passionate about and I think we try to just be very I don't know just very natural about everything we do like if it's something that I'm interested in and it feels right then it's going to be right for the brand you know I've always been very interested in history tradition and meaning in clothing especially in menswear we're a, a brand that you know goes across genders but we started as a menswear brand and uh, it's something that I've always been very interested in I, you know, I, I did a PhD. I have this sort of academic curiosity uh, about, about this stuff, whether it's like the history of the blazer or the history of the rugby shirt all the way back from its origins at like British boarding schools through, you know, the 60s, Mick Jagger, David Hockney wearing the rugby shirt all the way up to, you know, the 90s. And you've got Tupac wearing the rugby shirt and, you know, Land's End catalogs and 
Ralph Lauren rugby as a brand. I'm interested in like all of that kind of kind of history, whether it's something really traditional or it's something you know um, much more I don't know much more street. Um, and I think rowing blazers just brings together a lot of a lot of my interests, basically. I think, like many people, you'll agree that when you start to travel in Europe or even live in Europe, you develop an appreciation of quote unquote the classics, especially clothing, in a way that may not necessarily be the typical uh, route in growing up in, in, in the United States. Um, talk to people who may not have as deep an appreciation of the classics. Of course, you have a modified approach to the classics, but defend the classics for a moment for a generation that might have dismissed them before they even got to know them. I don't know that I'm necessarily the guy exactly to defend defend the classics because one thing that I try to actually avoid a lot with rowing blazers is this sort of like sense of stuffiness and this sense of like, well, these are the rules and this is how this is, you know, supposed to be if you're a gentleman and whatever. I avoid that whole scene, actually. I mean, I see that on Instagram and stuff. It's not my vibe at all. I try to be very much like a cultural omnivore, basically. You know, I love doing a deep dive in like Alan Flusser's books, Dressing the Man, reading all of this incredible history. I nerd out on like the history of the cricket sweater and all its different sort of like iterations and lives that it's led over the years, you know. And of course, I go down rabbit holes on on watches and on sneakers and on other sorts of things. I mean, this is just kind of who I am a little bit. But I do think that that's really important is to be a little bit of like a cultural omnivore. And I'm just as inspired by things that I'll see like in catalogs or album covers in the 90s as I am looking at like looking through the archives of, uh, you know, rowing clubs in medieval libraries in Cambridge, um, where, you know, part of doing the research for the book, I actually rediscovered the first time the word blazer was ever used to refer to an article of clothing from 1852. But it's like one day I'll be looking at that, you know, the next day I'll be, I'll be like reading some article on high snobiety. So it really kind of, it really kind of runs the gamut. I'd say in terms of the classics, though, there are definitely, um, there are definitely kind of uh, pillars of rowing blazers, like as a brand, the blazer, the rugby shirt, the Oxford shirt, the dad hat. You know, to me, these things are just kind of timeless. And that is what really ties everything together for me. Nothing that we do is super avant-garde. We're very much inspired by history and by vintage. I collect a lot of vintage myself. and And those are kind of the inspirations for, for a lot of what we do. Thank you. That's really interesting. Now let's talk about Seiko. How did you get hooked up with Seiko watches and talk a little bit about these three Seiko watches that you have now produced with Seiko? Yeah, Eric Wind actually uh, introduced us to Seiko many, many years ago. Uh, Eric is sort of my, I don't know, my my Sherpa, my rabbi, whatever the right term is. He's my spiritual guide when it comes to all things related to watches. Uh, he and I went to college together. We lived on the same floor freshman year. Um, that's how we That's how we met. That's how we got to know each other. It was long before actually Eric was doing anything with watches. Um, but Eric uh, introduced, introduced me to uh, several people at Seiko years ago. I thought it was super cool. We had just launched as a brand. Rowing Blazers was like, no one had ever heard of Rowing Blazers. So um, it was like a sort of like premature intro, but um, we just sort of kept in touch and uh, they reached back out. I mean, it's it's going back now a little over a year, I guess, but and, and said, let's do something together. And to me, it's like a dream come true. I mean, I have a lot of vintage Seikos. Um, we curate vintage uh, often with Eric's help on the Rowing Blazers site as well. And I'd say like, you know, the three big brands or four big brands probably that we kind of keep coming back to is like Seiko, Zodiac, Rolex, Hoyer. And uh, to be able to do a collaboration with Seiko is really like a dream come true for us. That's fantastic. So let's talk about these three watches and their specific designs, not only on the dials, but of course the very distinctive bezels. Describe those and explain uh, what each of those means to the brand. Yeah, you know, I mean, there are three different designs. As you say, the really distinctive thing about each one is the bezel. Each one also comes with a, an alternative strap, which is also just part of uh, the colorful, I don't know, sort of, they all speak to the kind of col 
obsession with color and pattern that I have and that I think manifests itself in the brand. But I'd say like the three really sort of speak to different parts of, of Rowing Blazers as a brand. Um, you've got like the Rally Bezel, which is obviously, uh, you know, kind of from the Seiko archives in a way. And I think a lot of what we do anytime we're collaborating with a brand is we sort of like look back into the brand's archives and see what really resonates with us and what what heritage and history the brand itself might have that they're not necessarily tapping into. And, you know, I've always been inspired by, you know, that rally diver bezel and to be able to kind of bring that back in and incorporate that into our collaboration is, is very, very cool. Um, we have a four colorway bezel. You know, it's like a Pepsi bezel, except it's blue, red, and yellow, and green. Um, it's very 90s in a way. To me, it like speaks to a lot of what we do at Rowing Blazers as a brand. You know, the 1990s, that kind of color blocking, whether it was like Benetton or Jam's World or, you know, the Andover shop. You know, color blocking was just such a, I don't know, it was part of the visual vernacular of that era and of my childhood as a, as a kid growing up in the late 80s and the 90s into the early 2000s. And it's, it's a big part of what we do. Um, and then the last one is a zigzag bezel inspired by the artillery stripe, the same sort of pattern that would be on a, a Royal Artillery tie or watch band. And putting that on a bezel is a, is just like a great little sort of brand moment for Rowing Blazers, and I think it looks really good too. I believe the price point is four ninety five on all three watches. They come in a special co branded case that we designed as well with the zigzag pattern and you know the Seiko and Rowing Blazers branding on it. They each also come with, and this was we had to jump through a lot of hoops to make this happen because Seiko is of course and understandably very protective of their brand, but they come with. Um, at least if, if you order on rowingblazers.com, they'll come with a black uh, dad hat that has the Seiko logo on the front and has rowing blazers in an arch over the back. I love any kind of like little merch like that. I mean, it's just, it's so me, it's so rowing blazers. Um, and of course, yeah, they each come with an alternative uh, uh, watch strap as well to go, nylon strap to go with the, uh, the bracelet. I noticed that you've been selling some watches on the Rowing Blazers website until now. You mentioned some of those brands, and the Seiko watch is going to be the first, uh, I, I presume, brand new or exclusive watch on the Rowing Blazers website. What is it about the Rowing Blazers audience and watches that overlap? Um, why has it been a good platform to move watches until this point? I don't know actually how it sort of came to be, other than I think that our customer is generally like pretty thoughtful, pretty interested in vintage, pretty interested in in history, and pretty interested in, I don't know, things that are sort of timeless, classic, but also not necessarily the easiest to find. You know, we just had, um, for example, like a Domino's Rolex, something I've been fascinated with for a long, long time. Um, I think we have now a ladies Domino's Rolex up on the site. Uh, you know, we've got some great vintage Seikos. We've got a, a Pogue up there. We've also got things like, um, I think just sold uh, a commemorative watch that would be basically given as a souvenir to passengers on the Concorde, on the Air France Concorde. So it, it really sort of like runs the gamut. But um, I don't know, all these things are just kind of in the spirit of Rowing Blazers as a brand. Now, Speak as a watch person to other watch people and help distinguish what makes you interesting. You said the vintage watches primarily. I'm sure there's an aesthetic, but what really captures your heart about watches? Every collector is different. Help people get inside of your mind. Why, why are you personally, Jack Carlson, a, a watch enthusiast? I mean, to me, it's kind of an aesthetic thing. You know, I'm, I'm very interested in design. I'm attracted to, um, to watches that have great timeless design. I'm also very interested in anything that, I don't know, is very colorful, uh, is is classic but unexpected, I would say. Those are the aspects that attract my attention, you know, to a watch. Jack, thank you so much. This has been a conversation with Jack Carlson, the founder of Rowing Blazers, and he and Seiko have just come out with the Seiko uh, with Rowing Blazers, a uh, set of three watches. You can see more about that on the Rowing Blazers website. Thank you so much. Thank you.